I figured out where all this background hum was getting introduced into this audio signal chain. There was a lot of background hum recently when I was demonstrating the 16 channel analog switch matrix, and there were a couple of contributing factors. It probably would have been better if the circuit boards with the sensitive analog wiring had been in a metal enclosure, grounded and shielded. It turns out it was mostly caused by the power adapter feeding 18 volts into a multiple 9 volt output power supply meant to power a bunch of guitar effect pedals and also power the switch matrix itself. And this power supply itself seems to work okay, but that wall adapter it came with is not the greatest. So I substituted in another 18 volt adapter I had, which I know works well and does not cause noise. And suddenly the problem went away. Here's a Dunlop 18 volt adapter that came with a certain guitar pedal with the Dunlop 18 volt adapter going directly to this 9 volt power supply, powering two effects as a load. I'm taking one of the 9 volt outputs now and putting it on the scope and we're measuring 9.7 megahertz on this. And I know when powering everything this way, there's no noise coupling into any of the guitar audio. Here's the cheap 18 volt wall adapter switching power supply that came with this guitar effect breakout power supply. Now it's plugged directly in to power this 9 volt adapter. So with two pedals turned on as a load, I have one of the 9 volt outputs going here to put on the scope probe. And here, changing the scale and maybe pausing the screen. Sometimes I'm getting little intermittent spikes up to 45 millivolts peak to peak. If I just let this run, it's got spikes all over the place along with whatever is going on here. It's definitely not as consistent or clean looking as the other power supply. All I do know is whatever is going on here is causing interference and noise coupling into the guitar path. So it could be just this noisier power supply itself introducing all kinds of trouble. Or it could be something in the design of this power supply here, the breakout from 18 down to multiple nines. Maybe it just doesn't like working with this and it gets along better with a Dunlop branded and different designed unit. All that matters is now I know this doesn't work well with this, so I'm not going to use this in a guitar setup. So I got this finally pried apart with minimal damage to the plastic. The AC prongs are soldered directly on there, going to the board. Output 18 volts over here. So AC comes in on the edges of this board. RABS210. It looks like it goes to a bridge rectifier because it has a plus minus output on the top of it there. The AC line goes through F1, T2A, 250 volt, where it goes to the bridge rectifier. So some filter capacitors going on. Transformer. Looks like an optocoupler there. It says 817. So that must be some sort of a feedback to a switching regulator. 5368D. So with all of that, there's a few support components on the bottom. This says LF2, power filter. So maybe this is okay for some other stuff, but not for audio gear powering, apparently. The better power supplies like this that have an input power source and then they split it up into multiple 9 volt rails for guitar effects and maybe a few other voltages. Ideally these should all be isolated electrically from each other, but these are common ground. So guitar effects have a center negative, so we go center to center. They're not isolated, even though a lot of supplies like this are advertised as isolated. Here's an example of a better, more expensive one. So here with our multiple 9 volt outputs, center to center, there is no continuity. And that's the way it should be. Isolated. 
And now I'm wondering what's happening inside this. Looks like it has screws on the sides to take it apart. So I immediately think I recognize there's a couple of switching regulators here. LM2576. So really it just looks like 18 volts will come in and it goes through a switcher, probably a fixed 9 volt because most of these are 9 volts. But there is a 12 and an 18 so I'm guessing the 18 comes straight from the input and maybe is this one the 12 or else there's higher current rating. Most of those 9s are rated 100 milliamp each and there's seven of those. Then there's another 500 milliamp 9 volt and then there's a DC 12 and then the DC 18. So whichever way they're splitting up the load here they got two switchers. There's a bunch of optional LEDs along here so that looks like what the ribbon cable's doing. There's a switch to turn off the LEDs. They're annoying. They're too bright. Looking at the bottom looks like the switching regulators are heat sinking into the ground plane and that ground plane is going directly to these 9 volt power sources for the guitar effects. So not isolated as we already know. Same thing over on these other final outputs. Ground plane coming over directly to the output from the power supply. Each output jack has a filter capacitor and there's some sort of fuse, it says F on the silk screen, so it's either a PTC or a one-time use fuse. I'm hoping it's a PTC, so I guess if there's overcurrent for too long, hopefully that takes care of that. So overall, as long as it gets clean power, this was still usable, but not the best design if you can afford something better. But I did have another brand like this before this one and yeah it was worse. It squealed if you plug in too many effects like three. There's I don't know what it is. Too much current draw. It would just start making a really high pitched squeal. So at least this one is sort of okay. I managed to get this other isolated power supply apart. This is very heavy. The first thing I noticed I don't know, I'm assuming this is just flux all over the place that wasn't cleaned off. Like, I don't know if this accumulated after it was manufactured or what. So I think I'm going to try cleaning up these areas before I put this back together. And I don't know if that's a bodge diode on there. There's the various DC outputs and each one is going to its own dedicated bridge rectifier. There's five bridge rectifiers, AC in and then plus and minus, and there's five separate DC outputs and one AC. On this side, the AC coming in, voltage selector switch, fuse, and over here we have five 317 adjustable regulators. So those are for the DC output rails. The outputs are adjustable between 9 and 12 or 9 and 18. So with these switches, the switches must be changing the voltage set resistors for these variable regulators. So here's all the windings on the secondary of the transformer. 6 ohms across this one and no continuity between them, so they are isolated rails. So with these more expensive ones, you do get what you pay for. You've got a real multi-output transformer, isolated rails, but the lower cost options have a place as well. As long as they stay quiet and stop trying to contribute to the guitar sound.